Unholy Death Knights are about to be one of the strongest DPS classes in the entirety of Cataclysm Classic, with a lot of your raids probably going to end up looking something like this, stacking multiple Unholy DKs because they are incredibly powerful and not only sustain damage, but also significant AoE damage throughout the entire expansion. And the class changes quite significantly from Wrath of the Lich King, getting rid of the dual wield playstyle where you are solely focused on your gargoyles damage to more of a balanced rotation where you're focused on buffing your ghoul to increase its damage, doing more with your diseases and keeping those up while still performing your rotation and during any sort of burst phase or whenever you need to using your gargoyle. But it is no longer this be all end all of the entire spec to just focus on getting a good gargoyle. And of course, if you wanna see more class guides for Cataclysm, definitely let me know in the comments. I haven't fully decided if I was gonna do all of these, so definitely let me know in the comments. But from there, let's dive right in. So let's start out with the most relevant changes from Wrath of the Lich King onto Cataclysm. And the first one is going to be that you are no longer focused solely on your gargoyle. The second one, like I mentioned, is that you are no longer going to be dual wielding. We are now the two hand wielding chads we always meant to be. The third one will be that your runes reload in a different way. If you played Wrath of the Lich King, you know that your runes would reload as soon as they were off of cooldown. So what you wanted to do was instantly put all of your runes on on CD and then spend runic power. That's no longer the case anymore because now your runes all reload in sequential order between the sets. That's kind of a confusing way of saying it, but your blood runes, if you used both blood runes, only one of them would regenerate first while the second one would be waiting to regenerate until the first one is done. So if you used all six of your runes, only three of them are regenerating at a time, and that is gonna be one of each color. And then once the initial one completes, the next one will start reloading. And on top of that, your rune regeneration rate is actually increased with your haste rating now, which allows you to use more abilities as you get more haste rating, so this will be an important stat, and I'll cover that as I go over all of the stats later on. Next up is that Death and Decay now only costs one unholy rune. That means this powerful ability is only costing you one rune instead of three runes at one time. This is a huge change as well as you are now only going to be staying in unholy presence basically the entire time. There is no presence swapping that you need to deal with anymore in Cataclysm. As for your talents, this is basically going to be your talent and glyph tree right here. I will go over all of this right now, but just know your highest DPS talents are as follows, and there's very little variation that you can actually use as an unholy death knight. The only real variation you have within your talent build is going to be to take away talents from either improved blood tap, two of them, or leaving one there and one away from runic power mastery, and putting them into getting anti-magic zone. Now, anti-magic zone is a raid-wide cooldown, and your raid leader might require you to have this, which reduces the magic damage taken of everyone within the zone or within the shield by 75%. This can be very powerful as a raid CD in some of the heroic encounters. You might also need to take points out and go into desecration if your raid needs a little bit more slows, and this will be basically the same thing again. It will be a little bit of a DPS loss for you, but not too bad. I would suggest always starting out with these talents. Now, some of the very notable ones that are kind of new is going to be that Unholy Frenzy, which was in the Blood Tree. This was the buff that Blood Decays, Blood Tanks would bring, and they would buff other players in the raid, increasing their haste by 20%. This is now in the Unholy Tree, and you can have this macro you're seeing on the screen to just buff yourself with this just whenever you are about to do your Gargoyle. And then the other major one that we have now is Dark Transformation, which I will get to in a second because I am about to cover all of your new abilities as well as the changes to your old abilities as well as talents in one second. Just screenshot this, this is what you're gonna use. Now, as for glyphs, we pretty much have a static choice of glyphs as well, unless this is an AoE situation. And that is going to be buffing three of your major abilities, Glyph of Death Coil for Death Coil damage, Glyph of Scourge Strike for Scourge Strike damage, and Glyph of Raid Stead to massively buff your ghoul. But if this is a heavily AoE situation, you will change the glyphs from Glyph of Death Coil to Glyph of Icy Touch. This will increase your frost 
cross fever damage, one of your diseases will just do 20% more damage. And when you spread those, it hits really hard, especially because you have contagion increasing the damage done of your spreaded diseases by 100%. Then we also have Scourge Strike, which will then swap to Death and Decay. In a massively AoE situation, this will increase the duration of Death and Decay by 50%. Just very easy to know why that's so huge and that is what you will swap but again only in aoe situations heavy aoe situations now as for major glyphs we have pestilence and blood boil both increasing the range of both of these abilities quite significantly and then as the third one we have anti-magic shell but this is something that you might want to play around with if you need to yourself but i would suggest using am S. Then as for minor glyphs, the ones I would always choose for PvE situations are blood tap. So your blood tap no longer does damage to you. It's not that massive, but it's a little bit. Glyph of Horn of Winter to increase the duration of Horn of Winter really nice to have honestly and then death's embrace but you can swap all of these again but death's embrace makes it so that your death coils can be used on your ghoul itself to heal it up and you return 20 runic power whenever you do this and before we get into your rotation here are some of the changes to your old abilities as well as the new abilities that are notable that you definitely want to know about then we will get into the rotation sorry for taking so long but i want you to have all of the information just so you know how to master this class first you should know that death knights now bring the agility and strength buff with horn of winter this doesn't really change but it is now shared with battle shout roar of courage and strength of earth totem so you are bringing that buff to the raid as well as debuffs for the raid icy touch will reduce the attack speed of the target so reducing the attack speed of bosses instead of needing to have something like a thunderclap and the really important one for unholy death knights is ebon plague bringer this is the spell damage debuff that you brought in wrath of the lich king but you you are the only class that can spread it easily with Pestilence so that everything takes 8% more spell damage. Other classes that easily bring this would be a Warlock and a Balanced Druid with Curse of Elements and Earth of the Moon, but it is way easier for an Unholy DK as well as way better for the raid overall, especially with Trash or AoE, to have Evan Plaguebringer. Next, the talent Sudden Doom, which used to proc a free death coil that was instantly sent out just from your auto attacks, now instead will trigger a death coil that you have to use yourself but it won't cost any runic power. Now, I would just have a weak aura that tells you when this procs, and I'll have links to weak auras in the description or in my Discord channel. Like I mentioned before, you're now staying in Unholy Presence basically the entire time. You also now have an actual combat res with Ray's ally. The, pretty much a lot of people have combat reses, but it's nice to know. And your diseases can crit. Those are the changes from before in Wrath of the Lich King, but here's some of the really important new abilities. There's three main new abilities that will be very heavily used in your rotation. The first one is going to be Dark Transformation. This will turn your ghoul into an abomination for 30 seconds, increasing its damage by 60% and changing its claw ability to a cleave. You want to have this up as often as possible, and the way to get this to actually trigger is by consuming five stacks of Shadow Infusion. Shadow Infusion is a buff to your ghoul, increasing its attack speed by 6% per stack and stacking up five times, like I just mentioned and you basically get this by using death coils. So the new playstyle is going to be get diseases up, build runic power with your runes, use death coil to make sure that you get in transformation on your ghoul. This is like the oversimplification, but that's like the core of Unholy Death Knight now. Then at level 81, we get Outbreak. This one minute cooldown will put up both of your diseases on the target and it will do it at range. Basically, this gets rid of any need on bosses for you to use two whole globals, putting up Icy Touch and Play strike yourself you just press outbreak and go into your rotation this is very very nice and it synergizes perfectly with the other ability called festering strike festering strike is a new melee attack that consumes one blood rune and one frost rune and it also increases the duration of your diseases on the target by six seconds so if you're playing perfectly festering strike will actually increase the duration enough of your diseases that they will never fall and you can just use outbreak again a minute later to to keep those diseases up on your target basically forever. And you should know that Runic Empowerment it is now a passive that sometimes makes your death coils increase the rate at which your runes regenerate. This just plays into the playstyle. You'll notice sometimes your runes regenerate faster than other times. Don't worry about it too much right now. It's just something that will go into min-maxing the class. And now we can finally talk about your rotation, which is now more of a priority system than it is just a static rotation, but the priorities go as follows. 
those. Keep up both of your diseases, frost fever and blood plague. This can be applied instantly without break just to start out and then refreshed through Festering Strike. Cast Dark Transformation as often as you can, so that is your next highest priority. You're then gonna use your Unholy Runes on Death and Decay, followed by Scourge Strike, followed by your Blood and Frost Runes being used on Festering Strike. And then you are going to focus on getting Death Coils out, especially if you have Sudden Doom procs, and you always wanna prioritize using Death Coils if you're almost capped out on Runic Power. So just know if you're getting close to capping Runic Power, prioritize Death Coil unless you're gonna drop your diseases, which case you'll Festering Strike. And then from there, it's using all of your abilities basically on Scourge Strike and Festering Strike. Prioritizing Scourge Strike more over Festering Strike, but you should know every time you use Festering Strike to use up your Blood and Frost runes, you will be getting those back as Death Runes. That is because of the talent Reaping. Basically, what this does is make every one of your runes that you actually use on Festering Strike, as well as Pestilence, will come back to you as Death Runes, which are now runes you can use on any ability, which of course you're going to use mostly on Scourge Strike. And then in an AoE situation, your priority is going to be to spread your diseases with Pestilence, then drop down Death and Decay, pop Dark Transformation as soon as you can, also use any Blood and Death runes on Blood Boil to increase that AoE damage, then make sure to use your Sudden Doom procs on Death Coil, and from there you're still just focusing on as much AoE damage as possible. You're pretty much always going to be an Unholy Presence, but if it is a massive AoE fight for a very prolonged period is the only time then you might go into Frost Presence, which just increases that Frost damage. Also, every 30 seconds, if you're specced into it, you can use Blood Tap to get an extra Scourge Strike out. This is very useful if you have just used your Blood Runes, so there's a long time on their recharge period, or if you're just out of runes and out of Rudic Power, it gives you an instant Scourge Strike for you to use, or if you need to use it on another ability. But you can use this every 30 seconds, so make sure you are using this as often as you can. And do know that you can snapshot your diseases at the start of a fight. So if you want to use cooldowns like gloves, synapse springs, or blood fury, you can macro those into your outbreak before casting outbreak. This will just proc those and have those diseases up being very powerful right from the beginning of the fight. Then as for cooldowns, there's basically five DPS cooldowns that everybody has available to them, as well as things like glove procs or trinkets and potions, but I'm not gonna get into that too much. But the main cooldowns you have are going to be first off your gargoyle. This is your big damage dealing cooldown that you can use every three minutes. And this does benefit from your haste. So you do want to pair this up with either Unholy Frenzy, increasing your haste by 20% or Bloodlust. These do not stack. So if you have Bloodlust or Heroism or Time Warp, just make sure that you are not using your Unholy Frenzy during the same time. But you can, of course, use your gargoyle during that time. Then the next one, of course, is Unholy Frenzy. You can use this on yourself to increase your attack speed, which also increases your gargoyle and your ghoul's attack speed. So if you need to use this outside of the gargoyle itself, although you probably will use it with your gargoyle most of the time, but if you need to use this outside of your gargoyle, make sure you're using this when you have dark transformation up on your ghoul. Because during dark transformation, your ghoul is absolutely pumping, so you want to increase your haste while you're also increasing its haste while it's pumping. Next, we have Empower Rune Weapon, which you can use on every boss fight, which basically gives you all of your runes back and gives you 25 runic power. This is always going to be useful when all of your runes are on CD. From there, you also every 30 seconds will be using Blood Tap to get a death rune back from one of your blood runes like we talked about earlier. And then before a fight, as often as you can, you will use Army of the Dead. And just like Wrath of the Lich King, this is going to be used about 10 seconds before the pull. This will just increase your DPS on pull. So if you can, every time you have it up, just use it before you move into the boss fight. Also, pre-pop your potion. Golem blood potion pre-pop this always as you're going in. This will allow it to snapshot with that outbreak as well. And then you can use one on the fight itself later on, hopefully with your gargoyle, if you're saving your gargoyle or if you get a second gargoyle. Now as for your stat priorities and what you wanna look out for, as well as reforging, you will always prioritize getting strength. Strength is your number one stat for damage. Always try to get strength. Follow that with hit rating. You need to have 8% hit, just 8% because our talents will make it so 
our spells won't miss as long as we have 8% melee hit. Any past that is pretty much useless, so reforge away from hit past that. Then the next stat we want is haste rating, which increases your attack speed, your ghoul and gargoyle's attack speed. It also increases the rate at which your runes are refreshed now, and it also allows you to proc sudden doom more often, getting free death coils because you're hitting faster. Follow that with crit because all of your abilities can crit now, including your diseases. And then behind that is mastery, which increases your shadow damage, although this is not a high priority and I would mostly reforge out of mastery for most situations outside of like heavy AoE. But even then, I would rather have crit than mastery. And then behind that is going to be expertise. Expertise will reduce the rate at which bosses can dodge you, but this is really, really not that important for an Unholy Death Knight, especially because a lot of your damage isn't from your standard melee and you're using a two-hander and you're standing behind the boss in most situations. So always reforge out of mastery. For a generalized bis, this is not perfect bis yet, but for a generalized bis, you can look at something like this, where you are focused on getting that 8% hit, like you can see right here, and then you're going to be just turning things from crit into haste if you can, expertise into haste as well, reforging always expertise into haste and making sure you have as much strength as you need, as well as gemming your 20 strength, 20 haste whenever you can, as well as gemming your strength in any of the red gems and you can gem strength and hit in any of the blue gems and for your enchants your helm slot will be the arcanum of the wild hammer or the dragon maw depending on if you're a horde or alliance your shoulders will be the greater inscription of jagged stone or if you're inscription you'll have lion's mane inscription then for your cloak you'll have greater crit or sword guard embroidery if you're tailoring then for your wrist you'll have major strength or draconic embossment if you're leatherworking. Then for your gloves, you have mighty strength. For your legs, we have dragon scale leg armor. And for your boots, you have haste or precision if you need the hit rating. And your weapon will always be rune forged with rune of the fallen crusader. And for consumables, the flask is flask of titanic strength. Your potion will be golem blood potion and your food will be any of the 90 strength food. And as for professions, all of them are very solid. I would suggest going with engineering and whatever else you like, but engineering gives you the glove enchant synapse springs. This will stack with your other glove enchant and can be snapshotted onto that outbreak disease you use right on pull. So it's really nice to have as well as it can be used with your gargoyle. Then you can go with jewel crafting, which is slightly better than pretty much everything else, but everything else is pretty much even. And that should cover everything you need to know for on Holy Death Knight in Cataclysm Classic. One more time, if you do want to see any other class guides for specific classes, let me know in the comments. Specifically, I would focus on any of the melee classes. I'm not extremely well versed in any of the casters, although I can learn them and get that info out to you just if people really want that. But either way, thank you guys for all of the support. And of course, make sure to like and subscribe for more content.